This is a video for chapter AP Statistics chapter 10 and this chapter is all about inference. This is kind of your first step towards hypothesis testing. So it's really important that you, you know, really understand the basics before you go into more complex tests because, you know, the AP a lot of the free response is all about hypothesis testing. So one of the first things kind of with inference is confidence intervals. And, you know, in daily life, we have confidence in intervals all the time with, you know, people trying to pick, predict polls, you know, the percentage of voters that will, you know, vote for one candidate versus another. And really what a confidence interval is, is it's the estimate and then you're adding and subtracting what we call the margin of error. So this is, if you take in a science class, it's kind of like the percent error. And we have things called confidence levels. And they're usually 90% um, or higher. You know, I would say that usual is about 90% or 95%. And what kind of ties in with this is the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. And, you know, flashing back, this means that 68% is within one standard deviation. 95% of the data is within two standard deviations. And... 99.7% uh, of the data is within three standard deviations. And sometimes with the, you know, three standard deviation outlier rule is that anything that's outside of this is considered an outlier. And so it's important whatever teacher you have or on the AP when you write confidence intervals, it's vital that you, you know, include some phrasing, some wordage about the confidence interval you know, just besides the numbers, and how this is kind of how you would phrase it right here. You're, let's say, can I fill this in for you? I'm, this is what kind of percentage confident you would be. Let's say we're 90%, I'm 90% confident that the true mean of um, people who like ice cream. Let's say that's what our test is for. Y is between. Then we have our numbers here. Let's say it's 70 and 80%. Let's say that's what our thing lies out to be. And so here, what we established er earlier is this is what you know, our averages, and then we're adding the margin of error. So, you know, how do you calculate the margin of error? Well, what you're going to have here is your Z star, and Z star is what confidence interval you're having. So you can look in the back of your Z table, and it's going to be, you can have 90%, 95%. So that's your Z star. Then you're going to multiply it by the standard deviation. So, this, you know, standard deviation divided by number of trials. And so the margin of error can get smaller with, you know, three different things. And it's really important to understand the relationship when this will get smaller and when this will get bigger. So make sure that you kind of memorize these or just figure out a system where you can calculate it. So it will get smaller when your Z star gets smaller. So that means when you're less confident in your answer. And this is uh, standard deviation. So when the standard deviation will get smaller, your margin of error can get smaller. But this you can't really manipulate that much. You can't really change your standard deviation. It's just kind of given to you with your data. And then the third thing you can manipulate is n. So this is your sample size. So you can increase your sample size and therefore have a large, uh, smaller standard deviation and a smaller margin of error. And this is your equation for, you know, the desired sample size for, mar for the sample size for desired margin of error. Sometimes there's quiz or test questions about this. So this is your ideal margin of error. Sometimes it will be, you know, 0 0.01 or 0 0.05. And then you're going to have it, your equation, Z star times standard deviation is less than or equal to this. Because it can be equal to this, or ideally it will be a smaller margin of error than that, but it can't be bigger. So then you just kind of set it up and set it less than or equal to, plug in all the data that you're given and you can solve for it. 
And yeah, that's all about margin of error and confidence intervals.